As summer turns to fall, Glory paid its first ever visit to China and the city of Guangzhou for Glory 46. Just west of Hong Kong and south of Shanghai, Guangzhou is home to China's third largest city. Inside Guangzhou Gymnasium, Glory played host to 12 non-stop battles featuring the best of China against the rest of the world. Featured matches in the Superfight series included the first ever Sanda match when Hong Ching Kong took on Yong Soon in an all-Chinese affair. And current Glory heavyweight champion Rico Verhoeven battled MMA star Antonio Bigfoot Silva in a non-title bout. That was followed by Glory 46 China, which included the one-night four-man contender tournament in the featherweight division. The main event took place in the middleweight division with current champion Simon Marcus taking on Alex Pereira of Brazil in a five-round title fight. It's Glory 46 Rewind, and it starts right now. We begin with highlights of five fights from the Super Fight Series. Up first, the lightweights, as Ching Hao Meng took on Pascal Scroth of Germany, who was making his glory debut. Well, the first round seemed like Meng was pushing forward, seemed like the fresher fighter, landing some good power kicks and punches. But Scroth did a good job at staying technical, staying defensive, and landing some good knees inside the clinch range. Round two was a better round for Scroth. Landed good right hands mixed with those knees. Mung just kept coming forward, trying to land his hands. Round three, I felt, was a better round for Mung. Was still able to push forward, but there he ate that beautiful front kick that Scroth landed most of that fight. It'll be interesting to see how the judges score this one. Here are the statistics from Mung versus Scroth. And as you can see, it was the German who landed more kicks and more knees, but total strikes landed by 19. It edges to Schroth. This is Schroth really focusing on the head of Mung, probably from a lot of his boxing and a lot of those front kicks. Let's go into the ring now and Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges scorecard. Here now are the totals from our five ringside judges. They score this bout. 30-27, Mung. 30-27, Scroth. And our final three judges, 29-28, 29-28, and 30-27 for your winner by split decision, Pascal Scroth! That was followed by a junior lightweight bout featuring number two ranked pet Panamrung of Thailand, winner of 156 professional bouts, going up against China's Lei Xia. Lei Xia and Pech Penmarong Kiat Mukau have just finished their bout, Joe. Take us through the highlights. A lot of the highlights come from Pech Penmarong's left kick that seemed to do the most damage off the arm. He landed a few good ones just under Shea's elbow, which did good damage trying to hit that liver. Shea did a better job at trying to come forward in that third round, knowing he was down two rounds to zero. Put some good combinations near the end, but just not enough. We needed to see that intensity earlier on in the fight. Lei Shia and Pech Penrong Kiat Mukau. Here are the total strikes landed, and you can see kicks were the difference, Joe. 35 landed. And by no surprise, it's Pech Penrong using that left kick to the body of Shea, and that's what did most of the damage for Pech Penrong. Now to Tim Hughes for the official scores. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of kickboxing, we once again go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals from our five ringside judges. Two have it, 29-28. The remaining three score them out, 30-27. A unanimous decision for your winner, Pat Padamru! Next up, the women entered the glory ring when China's Jia Lu took on Zaza So Ari of Thailand, both making their glory debut. Yeah, let's look at the highlights from what was turning out to be a great fight between Jia Lu and Zaza So Ari. Yeah, Zaza started well, landed good kicks, but Lu started coming in more and trying to land that right hand over and over again. And she did a good job landing it, which gave her the first round. Three of the judge, three out of the five gave her the first round. Second round, she started coming aggressive with her boxing. 
Zaza did a good job at staying long with her kicks until Lou came in and that elbow grazed her forehead. And we're going to get the official decision soon. Here is the strike count. You can see Jalou landed 44 strikes compared to 22 for Zaza. Let's go into the ring and Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. This bout has been stopped due to a cut that was caused by an accidental foul and is therefore ruled a no contest. In a super lightweight battle, one of China's finest, Shanghai Gao took on Alan Scheinson of Argentina, who comes into this fight with a 77% knockout ratio. Now for some highlights here from our Gao versus Scheinson fight. Yeah, and it was all about Scheinson coming forward. This was the early nice left hand that Gao landed as Scheinson came in. That was the best strike of the first round. Second round. Scheinson getting warned for hitting after the bell. Third round was very close. Both guys knew it was up in the air. Both decided to stay and try to get as many points as they can. Very interesting point. I was just informed that Shanghai Gao was deducted a point. I'm not sure if it was because of the constant throwing or because of the headbutt. Either way, Gao was deducted a point, so keep that in mind as we're about to go to the judges' scorecards. There's a look at the strikes by round. Both guys really headhunting, taking most of the damage up top. Back into the ring now, and Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals from our five ringside judges. They score this bout 29-27 Gao, 30-26 Shineson. One judge scores it even, 28-28. And the two remaining judges have it 29 27 for your winner by majority decision. Alan Scheinson! We wrap up the highlights with a middleweight clash between the canon Wei Zhou of China taking on the lone American of the night, Andre Walker. Let's jump into some highlights, Joe, from this fight in the middleweight division. Both of them coming from Wei Zhou, who just kept coming on the inside, moving forward, using his boxing. Walker did have good success using front kicks, knees, at times his jab, but not enough to keep Joe from coming forward at him. We were questioning Joe's conditioning, but man, can he go. He didn't stop throwing. Singles aren't enough for him. He likes to throw some doubles and triples, and sometimes four or five punch combinations. Just showing how tough he is. Walker not backing down. Well, Andre like Walker himself. Yeah, sorry, Joe. Walker told us that Wei Joe was showing nervous energy at yesterday's weigh-in. Apparently, it was real energy, and it carried over tonight into his bout. As you can see, strikes absorbed to the head. 12 more for Andre Walker. Now the official decision, and Tim Hughes. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are their totals. One judge scores at 29-28. The other four ringside judges have it 30-27. A unanimous decision for your winner, Wei Zhou! <laughs> We're just getting started on Rewind, and a bit later on, Heavyweight Rico, the king of kickboxing Verhoeven, takes on Antonio Bigfoot Silva in a non-title bout. Also, the middleweight title is on the line when Simon Marcus takes on number three ranked Alex Pereira. But up next, the one night four man contender tournament featuring the featherweights and Glory's first ever Sanda match between two of China's finest. Live on UFC.TV, Saturday, December 9th. It's over! It's Jamal Big Ben Zadik. I beat them once, it's nothing. Taking on Rico, the king of kickboxing Verhoeven for the heavyweight title. Yeah, it's redemption. Glory redemption, Saturday, December 9th, only on UFC.TV. Part of what makes Glory unique is the one-night four-man contender tournament featured at each event. 
On this night, the featherweights did battle. Our first semifinal featured Chen Chen Li of China taking on Masaya Kubo of Japan. Chen Chen Li from China in the white gloves, Masaya Kubo wearing black. Kubo came out with a high kick right as Li was going to touch gloves. No surprise that Kubo's going to try to use his kicks to stop Li. And there is a big rivalry between China and Japan in all athletics, especially in the fight game. And that's what we're going to see right here as they're going right after each other. Very devastating left kicks from Kubo. Started off with high kicks, now mixing kicks to the body. Lee swept the leg right under him when he's throwing that kick. Of course, a sweep is not considered a knockdown. And this crowd here in China fully behind their fighter, Chin Chin Lee. And again, another great low kick from Chin Chin Lee, who's pulling out all the stops early. Both guys have really good kicks. Kubo in the southpaw trying to use that left kick to the body. And Lee's trying to kick the, the plant leg out of Kubo. That's his counter to that body kick. He's waiting for that kick, take the, the plant leg right out. Ooh, that high kick almost connected, but Lee was able to block it and then tries an axe kick. Both of these fighters in phenomenal shape, and that high kick connects for Kubo. Yeah, they're coming really close. But I like when he hits the body first. Really mix up the levels, try to confuse Lee. Let go! Fight! If you're new to Glory, this is the first of two semifinals in our four man tournament. The winner of this fight will get about a 45 minute break and then go right back at it again in the final. Fight. A lot of fighters take. The first fight. fight in tournaments and want to use their boxing to save their shins for the second fight, but both of these guys are just kicking back and forth. Well, Chin Chin Lee feels a lot of pressure to perform. You can hear the ovation he gets from this crowd every time he lands a shot. So he wants to look impressive. But a Superman punch just misses. Google's pressure's been Really good for him. Chen Chen Lee trying to counter. And that high kick sends Lee. Chen Chen Lee One, down, and he may be two, out. What a three, shot from Masaya four. Kubo. It's over. Kubo advances to the final in grand style. What a knockout. It's Glory 46, and we couldn't have asked for much more of a spectacular knockout to start the night than that. Kubo just put his jab out as the field Feeler and then just flew that left kick right behind it. Chen Chen Li had no chance of seeing that. Touch, 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 boom. And Kubo was even able to put his right hand up on the rope for even more leverage. So Masaya Kubo with his fifth knockout victory in 17 wins, and he celebrated with a lot of energy. Save some of that for the final. This bout comes to an end with an official time of two minutes, 50 seconds of the first round and ends by knockout. For your winner, now advancing to the tournament final, Masaya Kubo. In decisive and lightning quick fashion, Masaya Kubo moves on. There, he will meet the winner of our second semifinal between Chen Long Zhong and Quade Taranaki. Back here in Guangzhou, China, as we jump into highlights from Jin Long Zhong and Kuei Taranaki. A lot of the highlights are going to come from the power of Zhang, who did a good job from his southpaw stance, throwing his left straight. He's mixed in some good, powerful left kicks and beautiful flying knees. Two controversial knockdowns, flash knockdowns, which Paul Nichols didn't feel needed a count. That was the second time it happened. Taranaki quickly got back to his feet. Those are some of the flying knees Jung landed. Just very good at changing up his attacks. 
Here's our strike statistics. And as you can see, it's Zhang who landed 46 total blows compared to 37 for Taranaki. Looking at strikes absorbed, it was the head and body attacks of Jung that did the most damage. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecard to our five ringside judges. One scores it 29-28. The remaining four have it 30-27. All for your winner by unanimous decision. And now advancing to the tournament final, Chen Long so after 30 minutes rest per the glory rules, Chen Long Zhong returned to the glory ring to meet semi-final one winner Messiah Kubo in the tournament final. Highlights from our tournament final, Joe, and so much to look at. Yeah, a lot of good exchanges. First round was the best round for Kubo, but then second round, Zhang started to pick it up. Sounds found some good success with a straight left. And in round three, back and forth, the low blow woke Kubo up, and that's what he wanted to do, put on an exciting fight. And from that low blow, it was just back and forth. Even though Jung was up on the scorecard, he stayed in the pocket and fired right back. Got cut from an accidental headbutt with about 10 seconds left in the fight. In the last 10 seconds, both guys just went for it. Kubo showed one heck of a chin as he was hit with some massive shots from Zhang, but they both give each other props for a fantastic fight. I'd love to see that again, especially with both guys coming into a fight fresh instead of having fought just 30 minutes prior. The official decision now with Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three tournament rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here now are the totals from our five ringside judges. One judge scores the bout 29-27. The other four all have it 30-26. A unanimous decision for your winner. And now, Glory Tournament Champion, Chin Lo in three rounds of non-stop action, Chen Long Zhong takes the trophy and serves notice. He's one to watch in the featherweight division. Next up, Glory introduces a favorite style of fighting in China, featuring the first ever Sanda match. Sanda rules allow leg sweeps, trips, or throwing your opponent down on the canvas. 2015 world champion Hong Xing Kong took on fellow countryman Yang Sun. The best way I could describe Sanda Joe is it's a mix of Kickboxing, Stop. judo Stop. with a little bit Stop. of Muay Thai sprinkled in. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. The way these guys Ready? can throw you in the clinch is just incredible. So the mastermind, Hong Sing Kong, wearing the white gloves, Yong Soon in the black. In the clinch, they're only allowed three seconds. So within that three seconds, you're going to see them trying to sweep and throw. So both guys prefer the striking aspect over the throwing. Kong wants to use his experience here. Where Sun's trying to... Oh, what a nice head what? kick knockdown and possibly a knockout! What a shot from Hong Sing Kong! And that's it! Beautifully timed high kick. Amazing stuff from Kong. This could have been a full kickboxing match. We didn't see a clinch. We didn't see a takedown. We simply saw a knockout. Here is that knockdown and knockout. Watch this. From that southpaw, that left kick just came up top. It looked like Soon wanted to block a body kick, put his hands down, and that's opened up that high kick perfectly. Right in the temple as well. Boom! Ladies and gentlemen, this bout officially comes to an end with a time of 35 seconds of the very first round and ends by knockout for your winner, Hong Xing Kong. In an impressive and dominating performance, Hong Xing Kong made quick work of Yang Soon. Up next, the heavyweights as the king of kickboxing takes on Bigfoot and later on, Glory's middleweight championship of the world is on the line. You're watching Glory 46 Rewind. Live 
on UFC.TV, Saturday, December 9th. It's Jamal Big Ben Zadik. I beat them once, it's nothing. Taking on Rico the King of Kickboxing Verhoeven for the heavyweight title. Yeah, it's redemption. Glory redemption, Saturday, December 9th, only on UFC.TV. Welcome back to Guangzhou and Glory 46. We now turn to a heavyweight bout featuring two fighters making their glory debut. Last minute replacement, Kuang Chao Lu of China, taking on Junior Tafa of Australia. This was a match of 21-year-olds looking to make an impact in the division. Hey! Will we even see round two? Here we go, Junior Tafa in the black gloves, Xin Chao Lu wearing white. Both guys with tons of confidence coming in, both believing in their power. I feel both guys with right hands are gonna do it. If it's gonna happen, it's with right hands. Tafa said, listen, my right hand is made of sleeping pills. And Lu will eat one tonight. Tafa with how much professional training, says he trains in the garage with his two older brothers. All he has is one heavy bag and one pair of mitts. Nothing fancy, he said. Sticking to basics, sticking to his power. And that right hand on the ear had his opponent, Lou, bent over. One, two, three, four. So a standing eight count given, although I don't believe there's supposed to be any given. That body shot sends Lou down for the second knockdown. One, One more, two, and it's over. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. So Tafa now going for the kill. But Lou fighting back. He's going down swinging, and he connects with the right hand. Yeah, he's landing some power, but that's where, there it goes, Tafa mixing the uppercut. That jab connects. Lou backwards again, and finally a kick thrown. And that's it, it is over. Junior Tafa, the juggernaut from Australia, with the first round knockout that he promised. What a start to his glory career. He came out as he promised, very aggressive with his boxing. He mixed in head punches, body punches. We even saw a nice high kick from him. Very exciting start for Junior Tafa. So, his 12th first round knockout, Tafa improves to 18 and one overall, and he is here to stay, Joseph. Yeah, he looked very impressive, very calm. He's good on the mic, and I'm sure he's gonna make some noise in the heavyweight division. Tafa's mom is watching at home in Australia, and Tafa said she's my inspiration, and I promise you, she could knock out most of the heavyweights in the world right now. Yeah, he came out aggressive. This is where he attacked Lou's body, taking him to the canvas, mixing in some uppercuts. Just all that power in his hands. This is that left high kick blocked by Lou. But Tafa continued to come forward. Just too much power for Lou to handle. Three knockdowns in round one, and that was all she wrote. So the Samoan, who's based in Australia, true to form, heavy hands, and one nice high kick to boot. Rule the technical knockout for your winner, Junior Tapa! Next up, the return of Glory Heavyweight Champion Rico Verhoeven as he took on MMA star Antonio Bigfoot Silva, who was making his Glory debut. Antonio Silva versus Rico Verhoeven. It's our main event from Guangzhou, China. The biggest factors in this fight, I feel, is gonna be the low kicks of Rico. He knows how much power Bigfoot has in his hands. So he's gonna stay defensive off up top and chop away at the legs. We've seen that Silva can land big kicks. He did it to Alistair Overeem, which set up his knockout in that fight. Rico doing what he does best, controlling the center of the ring. You don't want to give Bigfoot too much space. 
with space, he can really set up those power punches. And for the second time, Silva loses his footing. And Rico's kicking those legs under him. Those are gonna add up. There he goes for the outside low kick now. Back to the inside. The one thing Silva can't afford to do is just stay at range and eat low kicks. This fight won't last long if that's the case, as he takes another one. Well, if he's gonna take one, he needs to throw his punch. Set up his heavy right hand that he's known for. But Rico knows, he's intelligent. Here he's switching southpaw. I'm gonna expect a left kick to the body, there it is. Earlier tonight, when asked what the odds were that Silva would go the distance in this fight, Verhoeven said zero. And a low blow apparently delivered from Rico. Let's see the replay again. Yeah, wow. Rico switched stances for a quick second and threw that left kick just a little too low. A lot too low. Rico offers his apologies, accepted by Silva. And a reminder, this fight is a three-round fight, not five. So it looks like Rico's gonna attack the legs and then take the kick high. Just as Silva thinks the leg low kick's coming, he'll mix in the high Stop. kick. A lot of pressure on Rico in this fight. Everyone expects him to win, and they expect him to look good doing it. Yeah, he feels like he's representing more than just himself here. He feels he's having to represent kickboxing as a whole. And Joe, you told me as we were preparing for this fight and watching tape, you said the best way to get Rico is with an uppercut. Why yeah, do you say that? Well, in his last fight, we saw Lazar uh, land a few good uppercuts. He has a really strong high guard, so angling off an uppercut, uh, in my opinion, is the best shot to hit Rico with. But, you know, Rico's low kicks and his power are very intimidating. You have to, you have to fight and eat low kicks to get on the inside. He keeps his jab active, keeps chopping away. Look at the size of Rico's thighs. Two tree trunks, and that low kick really hurt Silva, who took a backward step, something he vowed not to do, and that low kick sends Silva down. He decided to take Rico with him. There's those low kicks, they're starting to add up. Well, Silva made it out of the first round, something not too many people thought he'd do. Joe, what did you make of that opening round? Well, just as I predicted, Rico stayed very technical knowing how and respected the power of Silva, but those low kicks are gonna add up and it's gonna be a very tough round for Silva. If he makes it out of round two, I'd be very impressed. That's the trainer of Rico, Dennis Crowell, who told us that Rico would knock Silva out in the second round. Yeah, this is where Rico turns southpaw. Something that I believe they're working on in their camps. And this fight would be a good time for Rico to, to get comfortable from that position. But it all, all the damage is coming from that low kick. Even here, you, you see Bigfoot going southpaw, try to take away some of the kicking power of Rico. Round two, scheduled for three here. Rico Verhoeven and Antonio Bigfoot Silva. Hey! And Verhoeven walks into the ring tonight under somewhat strange circumstances. He already has a fight booked for December against Jamal Big Ben Sadiq. All five judges give round one to Verhoeven. And a head kick and a beauty since Silva crunched down in the corner. He never saw it coming. No, we saw Rico doing that in the first round. He mixed in a few high kicks. And this is what he's gonna keep doing. Let's see if Rico can put him away right here, right now, as Silva does not look too anxious to get back into the fray. 
don't know, showcasing a different side we really haven't seen. Seems like just a matter of time now. Right hand, left hand, and that's that's it. They'll stop it. Perhaps a little premature, but it seemed like it was just a matter of moments before Fairhoven completely destroyed Antonio Silva. Yeah, Bigfoot Silva would have went down anyways. The referee stepped in, stopped it there, but nope. Bigfoot Silva, this has been on his list for a while, and this is one of his big bucket lists in his martial arts career. He's a martial artist and believe in 2009 he wished he would have fought kickboxing, but he came in and he did his best against the best in the in kickboxing. Bigfoot came in with a little bit of pressure, mixing in uppercuts, but this is where Rico timed that perfectly timed right high kick over that left glove of Bigfoot. Bang! Right on the neck, clipping the jaw. Rico showcasing a different side. Maybe being in China, wants to mix in some of those spin kicks. But there he goes, just put it on with his hands and got the finish. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an official time of 47 seconds of that second round when our referee Atsushi Onari steps in to wave this one off for your winner by technical knockout, Rico Verhoeven. Now all eyes are on December 9th in Glory Redemption when Rico takes on Jamal Big Ben Sadiq for the heavyweight title. And Rico is ready to get it on. The Redemption match is gonna be fireworks. So, make sure you tune in the 9th of December. Ahoy Rotterdam. I'm gonna beat Jamal Ben Sadiq. I'm coming for you, baby. Glory Redemption, the most anticipated fight of the year, comes your way on December 9th as part of Glory 49 Rotterdam. Up next, the middleweight championship of the world is on the line when current title holder Simon Marcus takes on number three ranked Alex Pereira. Live on UFC.TV, Saturday, December 9th. It's Jamal Big Ben Zadik. I beat him once, it's nothing. Taking on Rico, the king of kickboxing, Verhoeven for the heavyweight title. Yeah, it's redemption. Glory redemption, Saturday, December 9th, only on UFC.TV. Our night in China came to a close with the middleweight title up for grabs. Simon Marcus defeated Jason Wilness at Glory 40 Copenhagen to regain the belt, while Alex Pereira comes into this bout having an impressive knockout ratio of six to one. Simon Marcus told us that he knew sooner or later he would have to fight Alex Pereira. Tonight is the night, but whose night will it be? Marcus or Pereira, the middleweight championship of the world is on the line. We talk about both guys being strong in a different area, Pereira in his boxing, Simon in his kicks, but both of them are very complete fighters. Simon has showed good improvement in his boxing, Pereira a lot of improvement with his kicks and knees. Marcus feels he's better in every single area except possibly with the hands than Alex Pereira. Says it doesn't do him any good to sit there and exchange punches with the Brazilian. Yeah, this is where you're gonna see Simon use his kicks. He's gonna try to shut down his boxing by throwing a lot of good body kicks. Simon's left kick is one of his best weapons. In your opinion, Joe, can Pereira win a decision or does he need a knockout? Well, Pereira has the ability to knock you out. And I feel he does have the ability with his boxing background to kind of stay calm and stay relaxed. This is the first time I've seen Pereira fight five rounds, so that'll be a challenge for him as well. Where Simon has been used to fighting five rounds with his Muay Thai background, undefeated in Muay Thai. Well, overhand right, best punch of the fight so far comes from the Canadian. There's a right kick to the body. Poetan can't afford to absorb many of those. 
Pereira just seems a lot bigger than Simon. I was going to say. I know Simon doesn't cut too much weight. He likes to stay close to his fight range, fight weight. Oh, it's on six foot four inches. Marcus, six one. There's that left kick Simon's known for. It's interesting, you don't see a lot of smiles out of Pereira. He's all business, except when he sees our ring announcer, Tim Hughes. He loves Tim Hughes. Always takes a picture with him anytime he fights. Pereira with a good knee in the clinch. How about that body shot from Marcus? A lot of clinching in round one. Pereira, a lot more composed than I thought he'd be. Well, it could be the five rounds trying to pace himself. Mary opens up a little bit, sits down on those two punches. But the judges in China have been favoring forward pressure fighting. Open scoring tonight, and there you have it. Three rounds, or three judges, gave round one to Marcus, the other two to Pereira. So that's about as even as you can get with five judges. What Simon's kicks are gonna do, it's gonna make Pereira second guess opening up with his punches. And that one kinda got Marcus a little bit. Simon backed against the ropes, but then throws a body kick. And down goes Marcus. That is a knockdown. The champ Two, is down. Three, four, five, six. A seven, stunning turn of events eight, here. Gloves up. He got caught coming in. And this is where Marcus, or rather, Pereira wants to pounce. That punching power on display. Here he goes. Well, Simon in the past, when he's been knocked down, he gets extra aggressive. Maybe he's learned to control himself. He's gonna regain his can, mental ability and come back. You can see in the eyes of Simon Marcus, he's not really 100% back yet. It's another overhand right. Yeah, Pereira's right hand's finding a home. Pereira really not letting his hands go yet. He's being precise like a surgeon. That left hand stuck through the guard of Simon Marcus, who's now trying to fight back. Pereira's trying to mix level with his boxing. What a start to this fight for Alex Pereira. And you can see Simon Marcus looks like he's been in a 10 round fight already. Nice left kick, Simon going back to his kicks. And Pereira, there's a knee as Marcus backs up again to the ropes. Pereira's doing well catching Simon when he's coming in. And he's really conserving his energy. He's not putting everything he has behind his punches. He knows Simon's durable. We told you at the beginning of this fight, Simon Marcus has gone down several times. He eats another right hand, but now he's fighting back. We know Yusri Belgari's closely watching this fight as the winner gets to fight him in December. Uppercut from Pereira, knee to the body from Pereira. Marcus now stumbling around the ring, trying to find his footing. Trying to get some space. And Marcus relying on his Muay Thai background, his roots holding and throwing knees to the body. 10 seconds to go. A fantastic round for Pereira. So round two, most likely a 10-8 round for Alex Pereira. So what does Marcus need to do to bounce back here in the third, Joe? Well, he's got to stick to his kicks. Keep moving on the outside using his kicks. He needs to be careful when he's coming in, because that's when he's getting hit. Staying on the outside using his kicks has been his best chance at here, slowing Pereira down. Keep chipping away at Pereira's body with those kicks. 
Maybe mix in some low kicks as well. A small Brazilian contingent here chanting in Portuguese for Alex Pereira. And the Simon Marcus fans have become quite quiet. It's now Pereira fighting backwards, Simon pushing forward. And Pereira would love for this just to stay a boxing match. He wins that fight, does he not? Well, he's, this boxing is the big difference. Not really doing much damage with the kicks. Just as we predicted, punches versus kicks. And blood pouring out of the mouth of Simon Marcus. Left hand sneaks through there for Pereira. Marcus trying to bounce around a little bit. Find some energy. Not as much action from Pereira this round. Better round for Simon. I think Pereira is just waiting for Simon Marcus to throw a punch so he can counter. Well, that's a good strategy. It's been working. Marcus looks tired, does he not? Well, Simon has that style where he does look tired, but he can definitely go five rounds. His conditioning is not an issue. To me, it looks like Pereira has slowed down a lot more than Simon has. Simon's continuing to throw. Judges scored it for Pereira, so let's see how things stand right now. And Marcus might be in a little bit of trouble. He's definitely going to have to win the next two rounds. Well, if he wins the next two, um, it would put three judges as a draw. Two judges already have Pereira winning. A knockdown would do wonders for Simon Marcus in this fight, if he can find it. And even if it's a draw, the title stays with the champion. Simon Marcus actually had a draw against Artem Levin, so he's been on the side of a, a draw as a contender. Simon going back to the body. And an overhand right from Simon Marcus, and Pereira now looking a little uneasy. But he lands a counter punch. Simon knows he needs to pick it up. And now he's got Simon in the corner. Marcus sneaks in that right hand. Yeah, it seems like he's looking for that overhand right. He's thrown it a few times in this round. Oh, and a right hand, a good one from Pereira, one of the best in the fight, but Simon ate it pretty well. A minute to go here in round four. Simon Marcus, the champion, knocked down in round two by Alex Pereira. About a three to one underdog and a knee to the body from Pereira. Simon's backing themselves into the corner, and Pereira's trying to use his boxing and his knees when Simon's against the ropes. There he goes again. Simon backs himself up there. Pereira staying calm with his boxing and mixes his knees. 
and the optics are not good for Simon Marcus right now as Pereira is controlling the ring with his pressure. Simon could be landing more, but it just looks more dominating that Pereira is coming forward. And into the corner goes Marcus again, but he comes out swinging, lands a right hand, and then a body kick. He probably feels Pereira opens up when he's there, so he's going to try to counter punch. I wonder if Simon Marcus's corner is telling him what the scores are, because they are being posted. Might be down on the scorecard, but he doesn't look defeated. They're keeping him standing. So three minutes stand between Alex Pereira and his first ever world title in kickboxing. Some of the action from this round, Simon Marcus trying to use that overhand right. He's thrown it a few times against the taller fighter, trying to throw those looping punches. Hasn't thrown as many kicks trying to rely on his boxing. But Pereira doing a good job at staying just outside of the power punching. And that's when he landed his beautiful overhand right. This is the fifth and final round in a flying knee as Pereira comes out smoking. And he just threw a high kick off of that and landed a left hook. Herrera trying to end this in grand style here. He's already knocked down the champion once in round two. And another knee from Pereira and a couple of punches. And Simon Marcus in real trouble here. Pereira knows this is it. He's going to lay it out. He doesn't have to hold back anymore. Oh, and a right hand. And again, Simon Marcus off balance. His legs are starting to go. Simon Marcus needs a knockout here in the fifth round, but right now it looks like he's the one more likely to go down. Two minutes left. This has been a fantastic performance by the Brazilian. Called this the biggest fight of his life, and he's acting like it. But some knees from Simon Marcus. Yeah, Pereira's staying really calm, and he just f keeps finding his right hand. And he keeps moving back, because he knows Simon needs to go for the knockout. Ninety seconds to go. Good one two there from the Brazilian. Marcus seems to have found his second win here. But he needs more than that to win. He needs maybe a head kick knockout. Not much left from Pereira. Pereira expended a lot of energy at the start of this round. to the body goes Marcus. Does Simon have the, the energy to put down 30 seconds of all he's got? And now Pereira's starting to look really tired. He's got to be careful as he opens up with those punches. 20 seconds to go. A good finish to the round for Simon Marcus. 10 seconds. And a right hand from Simon. And that is it. We're back here in Guangzhou, China, as we look at the highlights, Joe. Yeah, and it started off with the punching versus kicking like we predicted. Pereira got a good second round knockdown. Gave him a 10-8 round. As the rounds continued, Pereira seemed to do well in the fourth. 
but in that fifth and final round, Simon knew he needed a knockout according to some of the rules, but Simon Marcus picked it up, found his energy at the end. Still up in the air. We don't know what happened with the judges scoring in the fourth round. So to me, the fight can go either way still. Very close. Do we have a new middleweight champion, Tim Hughes, with the decision? Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals from our five ringside judges. Two judges score them out, 48-46. Two have it, 49-45. And the final judge scores them out, 50-44. For your winner, and new glory middleweight champion of the world, Alex Pereira! Alex Pereira becomes the third middleweight to hold the belt in 2017. His first defense of the title comes December 9th at Glory 49 Rotterdam when he faces number one contender Yusri Belgari. And what a night it will be on Saturday, December 9th in Rotterdam. But before that, on Friday, December 1st, Glory returns to the Big Apple for the second time in 2017 for Glory 48 New York. Featuring an all-American lineup including Kevin Van Nostrand, Elvis Gashi, Richard Abraham, and the debut of former MMA star Chris Camozzi. Tiffany Van Soost returns to defend her belt for the second time this year. And then it's on to Rotterdam for Glory 49 and Glory Redemption. Highlighted by the much anticipated heavyweight title defense for Rico Verhoeven against longtime rival Jamal Big Ben Sadiq. And don't forget to check out all things Glory on our new and improved website, glorykickboxing.com. Or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as catch up on Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel.